All right, so here we are at these things called logarithms. Um, in the last lesson, I think I, I may have alluded to them, and so here, this is what this lesson is all about. Um, so we're applying this definition of a logarithm, whatever the heck that thing is, and finding the inverses of a logarithm and logarithmic functions and exponential functions. Those two things are tied together. Graphing, this is objective three, graphing logarithmic functions. Right, that's what algebra is all about. You solve equations, you graph them, whatever. And then uh, finally, um, use properties of logarithms to simplify expressions. As a matter of fact, that fourth objective, that's pretty much what your project's about, that Bean John Napier project, which you'll have very soon. Okay, so objective one, being able to apply the definition of logarithm. And what you see here, this is um, the inside of a Nautilus shell. And uh, the reason why I chose it as a picture is because this thing forms what's called a logarithmic spiral. I put the equation up there, and in that equation, um, it doesn't have x and y. What it has is a theta and an r. And this is graphed in something called polar coordinates, which you may see in uh, pre-cal, maybe next year. Okay. So on this first exercise here, um, here... Question number one is not too bad, not not too hard here. It's saying two to the x power is equal to eight. So in other words, what's the power on two got to be in order to get eight as the answer? So that one's pretty easy because you probably by now already know your powers of two. Two to the first power, to the second power, two to the third, third power, that's right. So x is equal to three because two to the third power is equal to eight, right? Check. All right. Not a problem. But look over here at number two. Number two, two to what power? Two to the x power is equal to nine. Well, that question's a little harder because uh, basically what's happening and what you're asking is two to what power is equal to nine, but you can't come up with an answer. It's definitely not a whole number, right? Because two to the third is eight and two to the fourth would be 16. So it's got to be in between those two things. So what we need in order to answer that question is this thing called a logarithm, which is the inverse of an exponential, right? Whenever we go to solve equations, whenever I go to uh, solve any algebraic equation, the way that I do it to get x by itself is I always undo what's there. I always do inverse operations. And so the inverse of an exponent would be a logarithm. Okay, here's something else to look at. So this is on your graphing calculator. Do you have that thing handy? If you don't, go ahead and uh, get it all. I'll wait for you. All right, you got it? Okay, so on your graphing calculator, go to y equals and type in these two equations. Under y1, I want you to type in 10 to the x power. Okay, hit enter. And then on number two, type in log of x. So on your calculator, you should see a button probably over there on the left hand side it just says LOG with a parentheses on it maybe it has parentheses something like that I don't know but put X inside the parentheses close those things now instead of hitting graph I want you to go to zoom and find zoom square that way it makes your uh, your your viewing rectangle proportional and that's what we want to see because well here let's take a look all right so this first graph, the purple graph, that's y equals 10 to the x. That's an exponential growth equation, right? Okay, so now let's graph number 2, which is log of x. That's the, the green graph there. Is there some sort of relationship between those two things? Hmm, those look like they're reflections. Why don't you go back to y equals, go back to y equals and type in this equation, y equals x. Back to graph, hit that graph button, and you should get something like this. And look at that. Those things are perfect reflections across the line y equals x. So, for example, if you have the point uh, 0, 1 on the purple graph, you have the point 1, 0 on the green graph. 1, 10 on the purple graph is 10, 1 on the green graph. These things are inverses of each other. So you can see, for there on the left-hand side, 10 to the x, and log of x are inverses. Does this graph kind of look familiar? Look over here at the flipping math logo. Hmm. 
This is something we've been building to all year long. Okay, let's look at this again with just a different base on here. So you don't have to type this one. I'll just do this one with you. But you can look for these keys on your calculator if you wish. So the first one is y equals e to the x. Let me get that graphed. So this is just powers of that e number. Remember, e is about e is about 2.718281828459045 dot dot dot. Anyway, um, yeah. So powers of the e, and then on the second one, let's go ahead and graph the natural log. Ln is natural log of x. And look at those two graphs. Those two graphs also look like they are inverses of each other. So if I throw in the line y equals x, I can see that those things are reflections of each other. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Those things are inverses. Okay, so basically then, if I, if I want to graph a logarithm, what I could do is graph an exponential function and then just flip some key points, some x and y coordinates, right? So uh, actually we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We haven't actually defined logarithms. All we've said is that they are um, inverses. Wait a minute, wait a minute, did I spell? All right, there we go. I. I correct the misspelling there, logarithms right there at the top. Now it's spelled correctly. Hmm, you think I would have noticed that. Anyway, so let's talk about what the actual definition of a logarithm is. Okay, so here we go. We've got to set some things up first. Right there in the middle of the screen, y is greater than 0. If you look down at the bottom, uh, or right there in the middle actually, y is going to be what we're inputting. You'll see why this is set up like this in just a little bit. So in other words, that's the domain. You can only stick in positive numbers into a logarithm. b is greater than 0. b is the base here. The base is always also a positive number, and b can't be 1. Remember, we said the same thing about exponentials. The base couldn't be 1. Okay. So, for y is greater than 0, b greater than 0, and b is not 1, then the logarithm with base b of y is denoted as, and usually we just say this as log base b of y, log base b of y, such that, and then right here in the middle, what it's saying is that a logarithm is equivalent to an exponential. I know that I just said that they're inverses, but this is very special. They're both inverses and they're equivalent to. So let's take a look. The log base b of y is equal to x if and only if b to the x is equal to y. Write that down. Okay, so let's examine that in just a little bit of detail. So what I want you to notice is that the base of the logarithm there is the exact same thing as the base of the exponential, okay? Those two b's are the same number. Could be log base 5, log base 10, log base e, whatever it is, the base of the logarithm is the same thing as the base of the exponential. Okay, here's the next thing. The next thing is the answer to the logarithm is the same thing as the exponent on the exponential equation. And that's very, very important. The answer to the logarithm is the same thing as the exponent on the exponential. In other words, what a logarithm is, it is an exponent generating function. It always gives you a uh, an exponent. So if I wanted to know what the log base b of x was, what I'd be getting is an exponent. I would be getting an exponent. Every single time I type the, type the log key on my calculator, what I'm getting back is, that's right, an exponent. Okay, so uh, on that definition that's right there in the middle, the first part, that's the logarithmic form of that equation. The log base b of y is equal to x. The second part that it's equivalent to is its equivalent exponential form. Okay, which means that we should be able to transfer back and forth from logarithmic form to exponential form. 
or vice versa. That's what we're going to do next. So, since a logarithm is essentially equivalent to an exponential, we should be able to transfer from one to another. So look right down there towards the bottom of the screen. The log base 5 of 125 is equal to 3. So we can rewrite this in exponential form. First locate what's the base. The base is 5. So let's bring that down. The base is 5. Okay. What is the answer to a logarithmic equation? It's an exponent. So the, ba so the uh, exponent on that base of 5 must be 3. So 5 to the third is equal to whatever you're taking the logarithm of. That should be equal to 125. Okay, so just let me draw in a couple of eight arrows here to link these things up. The base is the same thing as the base of the exponential. The exponent is the same thing as the answer to the logarithm. And then finally, what you're taking the log of is the answer to the exponential equation. All right, so let's try this ourselves right here. Rewrite each of these equations in exponential form. So for the first one, locate what the base is, and it's 2. So this should be written as 2 to the fifth power, because the answer to a logarithm is an exponent, is equal to 32. In other words, what this is asking you is, what power do you have to raise 2 to in order to get 32 as an answer? Okay, on number 2, log base 10 of 1 is equal to 0. What's the exponent base? It's a 10. 10 to what power? The power is always the answer. 10 to the 0 power is equal to 1. This one's important. That one's going to be a property in just a second. Okay, number three. The exponent base is nine. Nine to the zero, uh, not zero, one power is equal to nine. This is another property that we'll talk about in just a minute. Number four. The base is one-fifth. One-fifth to the Negative 2 power is equal to 25. See if that makes sense. The negative power flips it, so that becomes 5. And then 5 squared is 25, so it makes sense. And then finally, the base is 7. So 7 to the third power is equal to 7 to the third power. Okay, that makes sense. And this one will also be a property. Right here, speaking of properties, Here's a few good ones. So again, let b be a positive real number, so this is the base, and it can't be 1. So here are the first three properties for logarithms. So the first one, would you agree that b to the 0 is equal to 1, right? Any number raised to the 0 power, except 0, is equal to 1. Well, if you rewrite that in logarithmic form, that means the log base b of 1 is equal to 0. So anytime you were taking the log of something, if you're taking the log, uh, let's say for example, the log base 12 of 1 should be equal to 0 because 12 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Okay, so here's the next one. Since b to the first power is equal to b, would you agree? Of course you would. Rewriting that in logarithmic form, the log base b of b is equal to 1. So if I use that same example here, the log base 12 of 12 is equal to 1 because 12 to the first power is equal to 12. Okay, so here's the final property here. Since b to the a is equal to b to the a, that seems kind of silly to write, doesn't it? I mean, it's true, definitely. Rewriting that in logarithmic form, the log base b of b to the a is just equal to a. This is one of the inverse properties. So using the same example with a 12, let's say the log base 12 of 12 to the seventh power, that should be equal to seven. All right, so we'll pick it up there in the next video.